now, I'm pretty sure you might have heard some of these things. Today, we're gonna talk about the unique genetic traits that may or may not give black people an advantage in certain environments, diseases, or athletic abilities. We shall also explore how the genetic makeup influence and determine certain physical traits like the hair texture, skin color, or body composition. So, let's just hop right into this video. Genetic differences between populations such as skin color, hair texture, and various other genetic traits were the result of natural selection, which means that they did affect reproductive success. Through evolution, when body hair was lost, traits such as the dark skin and curly hair were greatly advantageous for the tropics. The texture of your hair is mainly determined by the shape of your hair follicle, which dictates if you get to have straight, wavy, or curly hair. Curly hair is considered a dominant gene trait. The alleles that make African hair curly are completely different from the ones that make Caucasian hair curly. There are several hypotheses behind the evolution of human hair, such as our human ancestors had curly hair, and the straight hair found in Asians or Caucasians developed somewhere during Ice Age. The straight hair may have provided an advantage in cold times since it lays against the skin and thus providing more protection from the cold due to its oily nature. Another hypothesis is that all our human ancestors had straight hair. And curly hair among black people is the result of environmental adaptation that developed as a protection from the African climate. Since black babies are normally born with straight, silky hair and slightly lighter skin, and the curly hair along with skin tone adapts later on, and thus making it an adaptive trait, while a Caucasian or Asian baby remains neotenic with their back traits, i.e. they retain their straight hair and most of their skin color into adulthood. Sadly, we don't have enough studies conducted on this topic to provide factual data, but we do know that predominantly black people have genetic traits for curly hair. The shape of the curls may differ slightly from anywhere between curls, coils, kinks, to very tight mini curls that almost appear like peppercorn when the hair is very short. And for the most part, the texture of the hair among native Africans is also determined by the environments. This hair texture does provide an advantage in different domains. Since the Afro hair grows towards the sky in such a way that it defies gravity while simultaneously shielding the head from the sun, thereby avoiding serious health problems like sunburn or heat stroke. The Afro hair also retains more moisture, kind of like a sponge. As opposed to straight hair, when straight hair is wet, it clumps, which allows drops of water to fall off faster as it dries, and eventually the hair separates back into individual strands. Well, Afro hair does the exact opposite of that. The complex structure of the hair slows down water loss, and as the hair dries, it clumps together and shrinks. The shrinkage can range anywhere depending on the length, volume, density, and texture. Afro hair can shrink from 40% to 80% of its true length. The shrinking compacts the hair very tight, thus allowing it to retain as much moisture, which is pretty advantageous in the hot sun, since it can aid to trap water or sweat, which helps in regulating the body's temperature, allowing it to cool down faster. Afro hair is also advantageous when it comes to pest control. Pests, like lice, can easily move around and lay their eggs in straight hair, but in afro hair, it's harder for lice to travel down the shaft of the hair due to its structural formation. Well, this doesn't guarantee you'll be free from lice, but it is difficult and not very common to find lice in afro hair. The structural formation of afro hair is pretty much elastic. Its mere ability to stretch and bounce back, expand or shrink, allows for easy manipulation, thus enabling the hair to adapt to different variations of hairstyles, from braids, twists, locks, coils, wash and goes, bantu knots, you name it. It's astonishing, really. I guess this explains why people are fascinated with afro hair and can't seem to keep their hands to themselves. Fun fact. Afro hair's ability to retain moisture may add as an advantage to combat hair breakage, when compared to straight hair where sebum, the oily waxy substance produced from the scalp, can easily travel down the hair strands and moisturize the hair, it is very hard for sebum to travel down the shaft of afro textured hair due to its curly nature. As a result, the hair tends to be a little dry and may break off easily. This is why products specifically designed to moisturize natural hair are crucial in a length retention regimen. Melanin. A pigment that darkens the hair, skin, and eyes comes in two varieties, eumelanin which accounts for black or brown pigment, and melanin, which accounts for red or yellow pigment. African dark skin is due to specific alleles of Mequan R that code for eumelanin. Other populations may have alleles that code for eumelanin too, but they don't have the same alleles that Africans do. 
Some people whose ancestry is African American or Afro European or Afro Caribbean may have both African and European ancestry, thus having different gene variations. But all humans have roughly the same number of melanocytes in skin tissues, regardless of skin color. What differs is the size and distribution of the melanocytes. The more and larger they are, the darker the skin will be. Populations in the African continent have the highest skin color diversity, ranging from dark to light. These skin color variations depend in part on general distances from the equator, which in a way have contributed to the geographical distribution of skin color over time. Populations who lived in high altitudes may have lighter skin tone compared to those who lived in low altitudes. And well, there are some benefits that come with having dark skin, like resistance to infection from a variety of skin conditions. Melanin-rich black skin may present antimicrobial protection due to its increased levels of epidermal lipids which play an essential role in the skin's barrier against water loss and microorganisms invasion. That's because the antimicrobial properties in the cells that contain melanin may help to reduce the bacteria and fungal growth on the dermis and epidermis layers of the skin. Black skin also aids in protecting the tissues and DNA from radiation damage of UV rays and thus offer better protection against sunburns or skin cancer and conditions related to folate deficiency such as neurotube defects. Since dark skin absorbs the right amount of UV radiation needed by the body, which in turn protects against folate depletion, because folate tends to break down when exposed to high intensity UV radiation. And women need folate to maintain healthy eggs and for the normal development of placenta after fertilization. Men too need folate for healthy sperm production. Dark-skinned black women are less likely to suffer from neurotube defects. Black people also tend to be ageless. When it comes to photoaging, black skin tend to experience slower aging, thus retaining youthful looks longer. Changes in skin's biophysical properties with age demonstrate that the more darkly pigmented a person is, the more they're subject to retain younger skin in comparison with light-skinned people. Thereby, black skin is more resistant to earlier unsafe skin wrinkling and sagging as a result of sun exposure. Another reason is because black people tend to have stronger bones. This is due to higher bone mass, higher bone mineral density, and slower loss of bone during adulthood due to reduced rates of bone turnover and greater ability to replace lost bone due to better bone formation. The slow rate of bone loss aids in slowing down the aging process. As a result, black people are less likely to suffer from osteoporosis or hip fractures with age. Different studies have shown that, on average, the epidermis, i.e. the outer layer of the skin, of black subjects contained more compact corneocyte cell layers. Consistent with this, it was found that the mean electrical resistance of adult black skin to be twice that of adult white skin, suggesting increased cohesiveness. Through demonstration in a study, it was observed that the darkly pigmented subjects required more tape strippings to disrupt the epidermal barrier, suggesting that the darker skin, indeed, is a more effective barrier against not only diseases but also certain chemicals and irritants. Still, dark-skinned black people are advised to take higher amounts of vitamin D when migrating to low sunlight environments. Vitamin D-rich diet or vitamin D supplements are highly advised by doctors. This is because dark-skinned people living in low sunlight environments have been recorded to be very susceptible to vitamin D deficiency due to the decreased vitamin D synthesis. Since they're not exposed to enough sunlight, this can make them more susceptible to different diseases like rickets, for example. A government study in the US found that black people on average have better hearing than others. The hypothesis behind this is melanin, of course. Scientists believe that black skin's melanocyte cells may also be the ones protecting them from age-induced hearing loss, since humans tend to lose their hearing as they age. Black people also have a stronger immune response to infection compared to others. The hypothesis behind this is that due to environmental adaptations and exposure to different pathogens from the tropical nature of the continent, natural selection may have played a big role in ensuring that only the ones with the strongest immunity survived long enough to pass on the genetic material. In a study conducted in Montreal, Canada in October 2016 by Professor Louise Barrero, where he carried on the study among 175 Americans, half of them were of African descent, the other half were of European descent. The 175 participants provided blood samples from which macrophages, i.e. cells of immune system whose role is to kill pathogens responsible for infection, were extracted. The macrophages were then infected with two kinds of bacteria, Listeria and Salmonella to observe various immune response. 
After 24 hours of infection, the macrophages from African Americans killed the bacteria three times faster. The strength of the immune response was directly related to the percentage of genes derived from their African ancestry. Basically, the more African you have in your genome, the stronger you're going to respond to infections. Some of these genetic differences when it comes to black people have long been used as a tool for racial bias in pain management. Black patients are undertreated for pain relative to white patients. In the United States, black women are two to six times more likely to die from complications of pregnancy than white women, depending on where they live. This was reported by the American Medical Association. The idea that black bodies are inherently stronger, therefore they can tolerate more pain and suffering is based on nothing but false belief that's influenced by racism in healthcare. When it comes to athleticism, there's a speculation of black athletic superiority. It is basically a theory that black people possess certain traits that are acquired through genetic or environmental factors that allow them to excel over other races in athletic competition. But black people come from different environments, they practice different cultures, they eat different foods. Africa is the most diverse continent after all. The Turkana people of Kenya alone have the highest mitochondrial diversity than the rest of the world combined. Claims have been made that some African tribes are more genetically different from one another than the Europeans are from Asians. For example, in the sports category like endurance running, many nilotic African groups excel in long and middle distance running. This may be the fact that nilotic people tend to have slim bodies and slender legs, and the fact that they mostly live in high altitudes which may predisposition them to have slow twitch muscle fiber and a lower heart rate. Slow twitch muscle fibers contract slowly but can work for a long time without tiring. These fibers enable endurance activities like long distance run. Other factors like culture and diet may also play a role in that since nilots who live in low altitude areas do not perform particularly well in long distance running. People with West African heritage tend to hold the world most records for 100 meter dash. Many West Africans tend to have more fast twitch muscle fibers which contract quickly but tire rapidly. These fibers are good for sprinting and other activities that require power or strength. Despite speculations that black people have an athletic advantage influenced by genetics, there's no genetic evidence to suggest that this is the case. Different African phenotypes may be pre-positioned to be better equipped at certain activities due to their body types, culture, or environments. That may be true, but that applies to every other group when competing in athletic performance. Every athlete isn't equal. If you enjoyed this type of content, be sure to press the like button and leave a comment down below. Let me know if you like more topics like this.